Okay, a little bit of a change of plans because the initial plan was to review the Dell Latitude 5290, then review the Lenovo ThinkPad X1 tablet and make a big comparison, maybe also along with the Surface Pro 6. But then it just felt to me like I would make two single reviews and repeat everything again in the comparison, which makes less sense and takes up more of your time. So I will combine those two together today. So the Lenovo X1 tablet and the Dell Latitude 5290. Later on, for those who might think about a Surface Pro 6 for a business device, I will covered it just a little bit at the end but today it's about these two and maybe you can already see one thing they both have the same purpose they are both kind of like those convertibles that I like to call standalones but with quite a different approach and you can already see that by the size and form factor and everything else and we will get into that but I want to get into a few numbers first from what I've seen, and I will only judge that based on the European Euro price that I've seen, the Dell, uh, the Lenovo starts at roughly 1700 and goes up to 2100 or if not even more, depending on the configuration you get, where the Dell actually starts at around already like, where's the price? Around 1200 for the basic version with the keyboard. So both come with the keyboard and this should also come with the pen, but in my review unit, it's kind of missing and it goes up to 1850. So at the max configuration, they are quite similar, but if you go from the basic version, there's actually quite a big difference. But whereas there's also a difference is the screen size and the form factor, even though the, the weight isn't it, because if you take the, the, the Lenovo X-Pad 1, uh, X1, this is in total weight 1281 grams, where the tablet alone weighs 899. Now, and this is for me the little bit of an interesting part because the Lenovo is <laughs> one gram heavier than the Dell, which weighs 898 grams. And as a total weighs 1238. So the little bit extra weight that, that you have in total for the Lenovo is because of the heavier and kind of bigger, more kind of laptop-like keyboard cover and that is the interesting part. Now in terms of ports, there is also a difference. So actually let's go around through both of these separately. And I hope this won't blow out my mic. But here we have the SIM card tray, if you can see that. Then we have two times Thunderbolt with the lock. And obviously here's for charging. Here we have cutout, headphone jack. Then we have the volume rocker, fan outtake, and power button. On the back we can see the traditional LED, the camera, the stand works really nice and I definitely like the coating a lot because this has a soft touch coating which feels very good. It attracts fingerprint and it gets a little bit dirty but it feels really well put together. Here we have the micro SD card slot. No, actually not, sorry, because this is to attach the pen which is actually a quite nice solution. Since I'm a lefty I would have liked this on the right side but this is a handy solution not to lose it. <coughs> okay, then the stand doesn't really move at all. I mean, this is one of the best ones because there is no wiggle, not at all. Super nicely done. And obviously the connector at the back. So that's pretty much it. Okay, let's see about that on the Dell. Okay, what do we have here? We have the volume rock on this side here. We have type A, which is definitely something that I would have liked to see on the Lenovo as well. We have two times USB-C, but this is not Thunderbolt, at least not on this version, this version. but this, um, as you can see, for charging as well. Speaker output on both sides, where it's a little bit different on the ThinkPad, doesn't really matter though. Then dock connector with one extra feature, as you can see these two knobs. If you press it down on something hard, the stand actually jumps out, which is quite nice. Then we have the lock, power button on this side. On the top we have the power button, sorry, this and this is the Windows button, which is something that I never used and I don't know why this is actually still a thing. We have the cameras also on the back. The stand, I mean, this is noticeably more flimsy and what I've complained about already on last year's version, this scratching noise, so they should have kind of coated that as well. So in terms of overall build quality, it's not quite as good, also it gets dirty. It feels quite heavy for its size, but definitely um, the, the overall approach is still quite good. So I can't really complain about it, but that's just something where the Lenovo makes a better job, which is also the case for the keyboard, because I mean, just look at it. This is noticeably thick, on, especially if you have this as a whole combo. This looks way more than a traditional laptop already because this is very hard and sturdy. Feels like a really, really nice combo. So let's get this up. Yep, 
and this I mean the whole type cover just feels like a normal type cover from a from a surface but kind of even cheaper I mean the outside here that gets quite dirty as you can see and it's also just not the best one because if we take a look at for example now the keyboards themselves let me actually change the angle a little bit and yes it's not all that easy to cover these two at the same time but I'm doing my best like the dogs right <laughs> okay huge difference I mean this feels way more like a laptop keyboard because the layout is a little bit more like that and it feels in terms of overall feedback with a little bit of flex great layout two levels of backlight really really good also the trackpad we have a track pointer what we don't even have on the Dell the trackpad works really well sometimes two finger and three finger gestures don't get recognized that well but it feels really good now here's the issue with for me with the Dell there is this little bit of a gap and sometimes if you type harder you even feel and hear this rattling and in some situations when I did some stuff with this it felt annoying I, and I don't remember that from last year's version so maybe this one just got a little bit loose but since it's not something that should change over time yeah I don't know because the gap was there last year already but it wasn't that obvious but other than that I mean it flexes a little bit more we have still backlight the typing experience is good but it's maybe at best but it's not maybe even that surface pro good surface i would actually prefer because the overall layout worked better the, the trackpad was way better this is also noticeably smaller no track pointer so if you type a lot and if the typing experience itself is very important for you then you have to go for the lenovo because it just makes so much more sense if you type generally and if you want just to get your stuff done because this still works then the dell will still do but it's definitely not the best one out there now about the pens just real quick because on the Dell like I said it's missing you get this that doesn't feel like you are writing on something smooth because it feels like on glass where it feel, felt way more natural on the Dell that I had last year so the better pen has Dell this one is still okay but for example not as good as on the surface where the Dell can compete so that's but it's better now what one thing that I actually forgot to mention is security because these are both business devices now what we have on the Lenovo is um, Windows Hello and we have a fingerprint reader it's maybe not the best one but Windows Hello works really great what we had on the Dell Latitude 5285 last year was a fingerprint reader on the back that did not work really well at all that's not even here anymore and Windows Hello does, doesn't isn't supported by the camera so the way I see this right now, it has no kind of biometric option for security, which is something that I don't understand on the business device. Maybe I'm missing something, but I don't see that. What I actually didn't show that on the back here, we have the SD card tray on the Dell and the speakers towards, uh, the, yeah, doesn't really matter so much. So that's that. Like I said, it's a little bit hard for confusing for me to talk about these two at the same time, especially also show things, but I mean that's that display quite a huge difference in terms of what they are trying to do because here we have a 13 inch and even though this device is noticeably bigger it's not even heavier which is a quite nice thing but this is a 13 inch device and 13 inches for a tablet in my opinion is just too big this is a little bit not cumbersome to hold but just unwieldy and clunky this feels better but then if you would compare them and we will later on compare the size a surface pro for me size and weight wise makes more sense because it's closer to a 12.8 inch a uh, 12.5 inch laptop but let's get to the numbers here 13 inch with a resolution of 3000 by 2000 which means 3 by 2 aspect ratio where we still have a traditional 1920 by 1080 on the dell and it's 12.3 inches so noticeably smaller as you can see in general but here are the differences as you can maybe already see by the video here this is noticeably warmer calibrated and this one is on the cooler side so both are a little bit off you can calibrate them which is fine generally i really like what this one does in quality because the contrast was really good and even though it's not the highest resolution especially for people who use a lot of legacy apps and don't really want to scale that much you might be better off here because with this high resolution even though the screen's a little bit bigger scaling is still a thing and it's still just not perfect on windows but you have to know that for yourself if you want the higher resolution which is definitely sharper and in some cases definitely better especially if you use apps that scale properly but this is more of an all-around machine if you are going old school and so on with the apps and so now in terms of brightness there is also quite a big difference i had i measured 420 lux on white 
<clears throat> maximum brightness on the Lenovo where I measured 580. So this one is noticeably brighter, even though those 160 sound more than they are actually. In normal use, for example, it was here 30% of brightness that I used and to get the same, I needed 55 here. What I also noticed on the Lenovo, uh, on the, yeah, on the Lenovo is that it has some kind of brightness or contrast control in video or in dark pages where it just dims a little bit. That is also the case on the Dell, but it's easy to just get rid of it. You can disable it, which is not a thing here anymore. The surface, for example, you have to go into the registry. Here you just use the setting, but here, whatever I tried, I disabled adaptive brightness, but something was still going on, which is a little bit annoying for me, but it's not really a deal breaker for most other people because, I mean, business people need to see the content. I don't think the quality itself matters that much. So nicer, a little bit kind of bigger and higher res, but this is really, really good if you just want to get it, especially since the quality of the display is really good. Now about the speakers, and I'm not really sure how important that is for a businessman, but let's check those. And no, it's not my mic that's broken. Those really sound that bad, but I'll get into that in just a second. Yeah, I think that's pretty easy to decide. The one on the Lenovo is worse, and I've compared this side by side worse than pretty much any phone out there. So really terrible. If you want maybe have a, have a presentation and need to show something with sound, you need an external speaker because this speaker is pretty much unusable. It's just there to maybe give you the sounds from the system itself, but for anything else, it's pretty much unusable. On the Dell, in my recollection from and checking my own review from the 5285, uh, I thought it was better. I felt it was louder and quality-wise better. So it seems like a step back, but maybe that's just my memory playing a little bit of a trick. But still, noticeably louder, especially than this. Not nearly as loud as the Surface Pro 6, but still good sound. It distorts a little bit towards the end. Both have an app to kind of set the sound, but that's that. Both have a headphone jack. It's better on the Dell a little bit, but yeah, doesn't really matter, I think. So depending on how important sound is, there is a clear winner. Now, in terms of performance, they have a completely different approach, which is something that actually surprised me when I did my testing. Because, I mean, in the system, they are both doing a really good job. Even though I have to say, if you have, for example, Chrome or if you have Firefox that just doesn't run as smooth as Edge, you will see a benefit due to the lower resolution on the Dell. Because that just doesn't have to push that many pixels. But this still works actually surprisingly smooth. You notice on heavier pages with, for example, a browser that doesn't work as smooth that there is some kind of performance degradation. But if you use, for example, the trackpad or a mouse, this does a really nice job. But just general feel, fluidity and lightweightness and responsiveness, the Dell just makes a better job. Even though we have to also show here the speed of the SSD where the Lenovo is vastly better because this is crazy fast with 3500 read speeds and write speeds of 1100. Where as you can see here, here we have way less than that because we have 1600 and 368, which I mean for a business user should still be more than fine enough, but that should be kept in mind. But what I meant with a different approach is how they handle performance and load. Because for all normal tasks, they do the job. This one, by the way, is the i7 version, where this one is only an i5, which should be really compared side by side, which is what I'm going to do. Because you can do all what I think a businessman does, but in case you need full load for a longer period of time, you definitely have to get the Dell. Because what the Dell does, it, uh, it turbos up to 2.6 gigabytes and holds that for the whole time. I mean, it gets super hot, maximum of 98, but usually it averages around 85 degrees. But the fan kicks in like after a few minutes, depending on how warm it is in your climate. It kicks in, but stays super subtle for like about 10 minutes and then it goes into level two, which is still absolutely what I would consider silent. And that is the great thing about these new generation chips. They have so much performance, but they don't really need much more cooling, especially that helps to keep them very, very quiet. I also didn't have any sort of um, coil one or something like that. So... This is not silent, but it gives you all the power all the time. 
Now this is where the Lenovo surprised me because what it does, it, it turbos up to about two gigabytes and then pretty much immediately drops down to 1.5, 1.6, holds that for the whole time and even sometimes occasionally drops down to a gigahertz which is something that I don't really understand because the fan did not even kick in once. The only, the only case where these two kicked in the fan in normal use, so just browsing or watching a video or doing some documents, was when I was also charging. On this one, barely noticeable at all because the fan is so subtle, so high quality. On this one, a little bit of some breeze you could hear. But, I mean, I had both in performance mode, so in the third one of four, but it still seems to prefer the temperatures to be lower and performance to be lower because what I had in temperatures was here around 55 degrees where I had 85 here. So this one is noticeably hotter, but I don't think that's really an issue, at least if you're not in a super hot climate, but then it will just throttle down. But this one prefers to be super silent all the time. And sorry if I say this, this and this all the time. It's a little bit confusing because I mix up the names all the time. So let's get to the battery life. They charge pretty much in the same aspect. So the Lenovo was at about two hours where the Dell was at two and a half hours, but the Dell has the option in, this, in the BIOS to change to four different kinds of charging pedals and then it can also charge in about two hours or less. So that's not the difference. Where there is a di difference and it's maybe a huge one and I don't know how important it is for you, but due to the lower res screen, the Dell holds for, I would generally say from my average, one and a half hours longer. Because what I got on the Lenovo was like a little over five hours to a little over six hours. Where I got from a worst case scenario five hours, usually more like six hours on the Dell, but up to seven, seven and a half hours. So you get noticeably more here. That was mostly using Edge because when I did my old testings, I would have been even one hour lower. But everyone else who does maybe use the brightness that I use, or has different use, should even get, I would say, one, one and a half hours more, which in that case would mean that you can get with the Lenovo seven, seven and a half, so maybe some people even eight hours, so it should go through the day, but I think the Dell will go absolutely through the day no matter what, even if it's a longer day, because one and a half hours, maybe even some extreme cases, even two hours, can make or break if you go through the day, but then again, both of these have UFE power delivery, so if you have a proper power bank that can drive it, that's not the issue. So I'm not going to go into software because that's one thing. If you buy a business device, and that's the big difference compared to something like a Surface Pro 6, you get business type support. So in case something happens, you get away from it. And that's why these also are generally more expensive. That's just something you have to decide because so many people see a business device being more expensive, but they don't see that it gets replaced and you get just a different kind of system. And you get, for example, Windows Pro instead of Windows Home like some people complain about it on the Surface Pro 6. But let's actually now do one thing. I'm gonna give you a quick summary of both, but also include the Surface Pro 6 now. And therefore, actually, let's start off with a little bit of a size comparison, just so we can see all those together. Now, the biggest one, obviously, with 13 inches is the X1. And then you can see, yeah, still smaller on the Dell. Then we have the surface which actually is pretty much as big just not quite as with the part here but still smaller is the surface pro 6 and then what i've noticed personally if i use my 12.5 inch comparison that one is pretty much as big as the surface pro 6 which means they are all pretty much as big as a 12.5 inch laptop maybe something like the dell xps 13 would be a, a just as big one with a bigger aspect ratio or display which means you really have to know if you even need, uh, like I like like call it, standalone. Because why not just get a proper laptop in the first place? Because in terms of size and weight, they are already there. I mean, the difference is, I guess, we have touch support, which we don't have maybe on any laptop out there, and we have pen support. So that might be the thing. I'm not really the one to say, because if you write a lot of documents, if you do a lot of that stuff, then then it might be important. So now let's get through the whole summary thing. In terms of overall design and weight, the Surface Pro 6 wins, but I'm gonna not quite include that in this comparison, so I will keep this a little bit apart. So this one, in terms of all three, is the better one. It's the smallest and lightest one. If you only talk about the business devices, then the it depends if you want the bigger one, but this, the, I mean the weight is pretty much the same, but for almost the same weight you get a noticeably better keyboard on the Lenovo and the different aspect ratio, which seems to be more 
common these days a little bit more yeah people like the three by two more than the old 16 by 9 but yeah that's something you have to decide now when it comes to ports i think the dell wins because even though it doesn't have thunderbolt which could be important for you it still has usb type c but it has a type a which is important if you need thunderbolt then the thinkpad and if you don't want any ports at all then go for the surface i mean yeah we have type a and we have the display port but yeah how useful is that really i mean for me type a is actually still totally enough but i'm just saying then keyboard the best keyboard, Lenovo ThinkPad, absolutely, then the Surface Pro 6, and then, with a little bit of an annoying gap for me, the Dell. Trackpad, Surface makes the best job here, the ThinkPad is still very good, and the Dell actually, just in terms of how it works, the trackpad would be better than the, the Lenovo, but due to the way, yeah, not so much. Now, display-wise, the sweet spot for me is this one. In terms of size, overall quality, brightness, calibration, it just takes the cake out of these two. I personally can decide because I like the higher res on the Lenovo, but I like the calibration and quality with the higher brightness a little bit more on the Dell. So that's something you have to decide. Now in terms of pen, Surface Pro and I would say Dell are on the same level and then the Lenovo, if that's important. Speakers, Surface Pro wins absolutely hands down by far the loudest, best quality, then the Dell and then the Lenovo. So here it doesn't make a difference if you're talking business or not. In terms of performance, now here I would say pretty much this one kind of loses out because it doesn't have a fan. But for some reason the Lenovo, since it doesn't really use the turbo, isn't really any faster. But in theory, due to having a fan and if you maybe change the power management profile and so on, it should be able to handle more since it has an i7 and it powers up way better. So this is due to passive just a little bit of a disadvantage but the best performer here is the dell it gets though noticeably warmer so if you want something more silent in some cases or a little bit just not quite as hot then the other two do a great job in terms of battery life the surface pro 6 and the dell were very very similar which means about one and a half hours more than the lenovo software wise yeah we have Windows Home on the Surface Pro 6 and no business type support. So you need to know for yourself if that's good enough. And giving you all of that now, I mean, for me as a normal consumer, the Surface Pro 6 is the sweet spot. As a business person, I don't know what's better for you. If you need the better typing experience, if you need the form factor different so let me actually know in the comments which one for a business person works better because maybe then i can finally understand what a businessman is looking for because i see them but since that's absolutely not what i'm usually doing since i'm not a businessman it's hard for me to judge what is actually better for example the speaker the speaker on the lenovo is terrible but is it really of any importance for something like a business use i don't know Okay, but I hope it was helpful. I hope you liked it. Maybe give it a thumbs up. And otherwise, until next time, bye.